girl out of here. Was off. I can walk by myself. Sorry, it's my job. Well, at least I got one juicy interview. Back to the office for editing. And now, over to a report on the exclusive Duke Silverglance Club, which is about to open a new restaurant for non-members. Huh. She could have at least mentioned my name. What can you tell me about the Duke Silverglance Club? The Duke Silverglance Club is my jewel and my passion. I want people to come here and forget about their troubles. It's a really beautiful and nice place. I'm extremely pleased to hear you say that. What?! That's not my interview! <gasps> Those are my questions to Sylvia, but it's Samuel who's answering. Chapter 3 Something fishy is going on. First Richard disappears, and then someone edits my segment. I'd better call the club and ask Sylvia if she knows what happened to the interview. The Duke Silverglance Club, Victor speaking. Hello, Victor. It's Patricia from Radio IDUN. Hello. How may I help you? I'd like to talk to Sylvia. Is she there? Now's not a good time. Why is that? Samuel is furious with Sylvia and the whole staff. It's probably best if you don't come here ever again. Good luck. What do you mean... I'm glad I called instead of walking over there. Someone edited my segment, but who? I'll check around the office and see if anyone knows anything. Carl's not here, but he'll probably be here shortly. To the lobby. Monica doesn't seem to be at her desk. The newsroom. No live broadcast I can interrupt this time. Monica is down here reading. There's a note on the power switch. Don't touch during broadcast. Oops. No one is in the booth right now. Imagine doing a live broadcast from there. <sighs> Maybe one day. The recording booth. It's empty. Hello, Monica. Are you on a break? Yeah, I sit down here sometimes when we're not on the air. Nice and quiet. What's on your mind? My broad... Goodbye. My bro... Something was wrong with my broadcast. Really? I thought it sounded great. It had been edited after I handed it in last night. Someone changed all the responses. What? But that's terrible. The workflow, the interview. My questions were to Sylvia Silverglands, not Samuel. Well, that's just terrible. Who would do that? I don't know. Workflow, how can something like this happen? I don't know. You gave me the tape yesterday and I handed it to Carl so he could work his magic with the audio. I know Chief listened to it. I think he was curious about your first story. Oh. I didn't know he listened to our work. Oh, yeah. He makes sure that everything is of the highest quality. He can be difficult to read sometimes, but I thought he seemed pleased. Now, Stephanie always listens to the material the day before it goes on the air. Then we put it down here until it's time to broadcast it. So it could have been more or less anyone? Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> Enough about the broadcast. Thanks. Was there anything else you wanted, huh? Goodbye. See you later, Monica. To the lobby. Richard's office. Stephanie seems to have occupied it. She seems to have made herself at home here.
Hello, Stephanie. You're Patricia, right? Yep. You got a minute? I can probably spare a few minutes. What do you want? My broadcast. My broadcast? Yes, about that. If you make changes, you have to tell me. I don't appreciate being surprised with things like this during a live broadcast. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It wasn't me that edited it. <laughs> oh, really? The interview. The changes. Enough of cha The interview. I interviewed Sylvia Silverglanz, not that idiot Samuel. That's the one I heard yesterday. You've still got a lot to learn, but for a beginner, it wasn't bad. Thanks. Don't let that go to your head now. No, absolutely not. Good. Anything else? Changes. Who edited my broadcast? It wasn't me, that's for sure. Of course not. But someone did. Don't give me any vague accusations. I didn't mean to... It's your responsibility to make sure that your material is fit to broadcast. But... No buts. I don't want to hear another word about this. Enough about... Thanks. Was there something else you wanted? My broadcast. Richard's office. Why are you in Richard's office? He wasn't using it, so why should it stay empty? He's only been missing a few days. How does my using his office change anything? He's still missing. A bit disrespectful, don't you think? Isn't it a bit disrespectful of him not to let anyone use such a nice office? You're twisting my words. I am? Goodbye. To the lobby. Carl's in my office. To the lobby. Carl's in my office. To the lobby. The chief's office. <laughs> Doesn't smell as much as cigars in here today. The chief has to know what happened at my broadcast. Hello. Do you have a minute? Yes. Come in. Yes, uh, how may I help you? My broadcast. The club. My bro My um my broadcast. What happened to it? What do you mean? It aired. You should be pleased, no? That wasn't my broadcast that went on the air. Explain. I interviewed Samuel, but it wasn't any good. Nothing he said to me was on that broadcast. Patricia, you had one job. You were supposed to run a story about the club. You're telling me you didn't even manage to do that? Yes. I talked to Sylvia Silverglanz instead, and that was a lot more interesting. But someone must have edited my broadcast. I have no idea what you're talking about. Those were my questions to Sylvia, but someone had edited in Samuel's answers. Are you saying someone tampered with your interview? I don't know. I refuse to believe that anyone here would do such a thing. Someone must have done it. If it wasn't someone from here, then who? It's best that you leave it alone. Uh, but... Hey, hey, no buts. Just let it go. Goodbye. The club. The Silver Glance Club opening a restaurant isn't much to report on, is it? Why did we run this story? Down at your level, there's really no need for you to worry about politics. And you should be pleased about that. Checks and balances? That's good. You catch on quickly. I understand what Richard sees in you. Good. So what did we get? You got your first story. Be content with that. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. To the lobby. Carl! Hello, Patricia. Congratulations on your first story. Someone had edited it. What? It sounded great yesterday when I mixed it. There's something fishy about that place. Richard was a member there. Maybe he discovered something, and that's why he's missing. 
We haven't had time to fix that tape you found. Do you think there's something on it? There's only one way to find out. Come to our office and we can examine the tape. Carl's in my office. Hello, Patricia. Are you ready to go to work on the tape? Yes. Yes, let's do this. I've started to clean it up, but you might as well learn how to do it. I have a built-in function on my tape recorder that can help you. You just have to drag right or left across the wheel to clean up the sound. Keep looking until you get a clear sound. Okay. Did you hear that? No. What? A tiny click right before he says, My son, Samuel. I, Alan Silverglance, hereby give my entire fortune to my son, Samuel. Yes, I hear it now. Someone has edited the will. Who could do that? I could have, but I wouldn't leave such a clear sign that I had tampered with it. A clear sign? I didn't hear it until you pointed it out to me. A layman would probably not notice, but I've been working with audio since I was a child. There's no doubt that the will has been tampered with. It says the Brandenburg Law Firm on the box. We should head over there and take a look. Yes, absolutely. Could be the scoop of the year. But we can't just leave work. Meet you there tonight? Yes, let's do that. The Brandenburg Law Firm building. Let's see what we can dig up. There's a cat up there by an open window, enjoying the evening air. It might be a way into the law firm, but I'm unable to reach it. A pile of empty fruit boxes. Should I bring one with me? Yes. I don't know why I'm picking this up. It might come in handy, I guess. A dark alley. I suppose it leads to the back of the house. Huh. It's dark here. Just one lamp lit. Maybe I can get into the law firm from here. A window that should lead inside the law firm. Someone is talking on the phone up there. The window is too high up. I need to get closer if I want to hear what he's saying. A garbage dumpster. What do I do with it? Rummage. Clothes. Rummage. Ugh, yuck! What is that slimy thing? Sometimes I wonder what makes me do these things. The garbage dumpster. Rummage. Close. There. The dumpster is closed. The garbage dumpster. Rummage. Use box. Well, I've managed to put a box on top of a dumpster. That's one thing off the bucket list. The box is now on top of the dumpster. Quite the feat, if you ask me. (laughs) The window. A box on top of a dumpster is very useful. You can, for instance, stand on top of it while you eavesdrop on a shady lawyer while he's on the phone. Should I climb up to the window? Yes. This should be exciting. She has no proof. the creepy guy from the VIP room at the club. Was that lawyer Brandenburg? Yes, but take it easy. That reporter doesn't know anything. Richard edited her broadcast. No one will ever hear the original. (gasps) Richard. Okay, okay, we'll destroy the tape tonight. 
I still think you're overreacting. I'll be there as soon as I can. I just need to take care of something first. Oh my, I'd better find that tape before they destroy it. Carl's not here, so I have to do it myself. I didn't expect a slimeball lawyer to have such a nice little office. <sighs> no time to enjoy the scenery, Patricia. He could be back any moment. If I was some kind of evidence, where would I hide? A safe. That seems promising. I've got my contact, Mike. Could we make it 3-0 for Patricia versus Locks today? Should I try to open it? No. I should probably look around first. The lawyer's desk. Nothing of interest here. The window. Oof. I should really find that tape before I get out of here. The safe. Should I try to open it? Okay. The locking mechanism looks like the one on Richard's safe. I can do this. Wait, no! Chapter 4 Oh, my head. What happened? Where am I? It's so dark. Ouch! I'm locked in! Help! Is someone there? Ugh, I probably shouldn't have done that. If they hear me, they might knock me out again. A basement? <gasps> Hang on! This is the club's basement! The cabinet I was locked up in. Um, I don't want to go back in there again. The elevator engine. I have better things to do right now than fiddle around with this thing. The stairs to the kitchen. The kitchen. It's dark and empty. It must be the middle of the night. Ah, I was probably knocked out for hours. The service elevator. I don't dare use that now. What if they're waiting for me up there? The speaking tube. There are voices coming from it. Why did you drag her here? Me? You were the one who had to talk on the radio. Cut it out. We need to solve this. What are we going to do with her? No one was supposed to get hurt. A bit late to go soft. Don't you think, Richard? Where do you think the money would have gone if we hadn't changed the will? To that blasted foundation! I need some air. You're not going anywhere. Never mind. He'll be back. He knows he's just as involved in this as we are. Put that tape away! I get nervous just by looking at it. We need to destroy it. The sooner, the better. We should wait. It could be good to have it. Just calm down. Don't do anything rash now. Richard, what are you doing with these slime balls? At least Samuel and the lawyer are in the VIP room. It sounds like they brought the tape with them, but haven't destroyed it yet. Samuel sounds angry and desperate. The tape might get destroyed soon. Hmm. I need to find a way to get them out of the VIP room so I can get to the tape. The service elevator. The door to the lounge. Oh, it's very dark and quiet without any people here. Feels very eerie and lonely. An open window. It looks like it's getting light outside. I could escape, but I need to get my hands on that will. It's my only shot at clearing up this mess. A pool cue. Should I take it with me? If I run into that lawyer again, I just might be able to get some payback. The door to the kitchen.
the lounge. The door to the bar. The bar. Lights are out and not a soul here. A phone. Should I call Carl? Hello? It's Patricia. I need help. Where did you go? We were supposed to meet the law firm. Why are you whispering? I was there snooping around. You were supposed to wait for me. I couldn't wait. They were going to destroy the evidence that he and Samuel forged the will to steal the whole inheritance. The lawyer caught me and knocked me out. When I woke up, I was locked up at the club. Okay, hide somewhere. I'll call the police and be there as fast as I can. I can't just hide. They're going to destroy the evidence. Richard is involved in some way. Richard? Don't do anything stupid now, Patricia. Help is on the way. When have I ever done something stupid? <laughs> Mm. The door to the lounge. To the bar. To the lounge. The kitchen. The service elevator. The speaking tube. They're still in the VIP room. I need to find a way to get them out of the VIP room. The basement stairs. The newspaper, with the article on their father's death, and fortune. Soon they will hopefully run a story about the brave reporter who solved the case of the forged will. The elevator engine. To the kitchen. The lounge. To the bar. To the lounge. The kitchen. The service elevator. The basement stairs. To the kitchen. The speaking tube. They're still in the VIP room. I need to find a way to get them out of the VIP room. The lounge. The window. I can't leave without the will. To the bar. The VIP room. Samuel and the lawyer are inside. Should I try to lock them in with the pool cue? Yes. Quietly and carefully so they don't hear me. There we go. Now the elevator is their only way out. To the lounge. To the bar. To the lounge. 
the kitchen. The basement stairs. The elevator engine. to the kitchen. The speaking tube. Should I try to get their attention? All right, now let's try to get them into the elevator. Hey there, creeps! You'll have to do better than that if you want to keep me locked up! Quickly, we can't let her get away! What the? The door to the bar is locked! The elevator! The elevator is coming down. I better hurry. The basement stairs. The elevator engine. Time to put my newfound knowledge on elevator engines to use. Like the rats they are, they walked right into my trap. To the kitchen. In here. In here. Help. The lounge. Cupid girl. To the bar. To the lounge. The kitchen. Help. We're gonna get you. We won't get away with this. The lounge. Let us. To the bar. The VIP room. With the bad guys locked up in the elevator, the coast should be clear. All right, the crooks are out of the way. Now let's see if we can find some evidence. A tape recorder. There's already a tape in it. Could I be so lucky? I, Alan Silverglance. Hereby give my entire fortune to the Silver Glands Foundation. My personal property and estates go to my children, Oscar and Sylvia. My son, Samuel, receives nothing. Wow. I don't need to hear any more to know what that means for Samuel and his accomplices. I'd better take the tape and... So, what are we going to... D Patricia? <clears throat> Richard! Come quickly. You need to get out of here before they realize you've escaped. You can relax. They're stuck in the elevator. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Patricia. What really happened? It's a long story. Richard's involvement. How are you involved in this? I had no choice. Somehow Samuel knew I had taken money to make some flattering stories a few years ago. If I hadn't done what he wanted, he would have told Chief. So you continue to do the wrong thing? Two wrongs make a right? Is that what you're saying? I don't know. No one was supposed to get hurt. Well, what about the Foundation? You don't think everyone depending on it is harmed by this? <sighs> I don't know what to say. 
The disappearance. Why did you just disappear? I was really worried. We all were. Samuel and his cronies picked me up the other night. They were afraid I would tell the police about what we've done. They picked you up? Were you kidnapped? Not really. I don't understand. Why didn't you just leave? Where, where would I go? I'm just as involved in this as they are. You could have talked to me. I know you. You would have started to snoop around and they would have discovered it. Samuel isn't really the forgiving type. My bro my broad- So it was you who edited my segment. Yes, that was me. I I'm so sorry. Sorry isn't good enough. Look, Samuel was furious after you'd spoken to Sylvia. I was afraid he was going to do something stupid, so I told him I could edit the tape. The police are here. <sighs> I guess it's time to take responsibility for my actions. What do you think? Prison for life? <sighs> Richard. It's up to you what happens next. I'm just glad you're not hurt. Help Richard. Expose ri Help Richard. Mm, I might regret this. Leave before the police arrive. Thank you. Welcome, dear listeners. Today we bring you an exclusive story. Our young reporter, Patricia, has uncovered foul play regarding the will of the deceased businessman, Alan Silverglons. Patricia, can you tell us what has happened? Thank you, Stephanie. It was a team effort. As you may have read in the newspapers, Samuel Silverglans inherited his father's fortune. But it turns out that he, with the aid of the Brandenburg Law Firm, manipulated his father's will. The money should have gone to the Silverglans Foundation to help the less fortunate in our community. We're all pleased that the theft was discovered. You will hear more of this story as it develops and as we and the police uncover more details. Hello, it's Patricia. How are you? Awful. I still don't understand why you didn't say something about my involvement. You're my friend, so I chose to give you a second chance. But never do anything like that again. I promise. So, what are you going to do now? I'll hand in my resignation tomorrow. Samuel and Brandenburg won't keep quiet about my part in this. I'm moving out of the country to start over someplace else. Okay. Take care of yourself. You too. You have played Frequency Missing. In the cast, you have heard Chelsea Spirito, Joe Thomas, Jay Preston, Ahmed Abu Duff, Aaron Trimble, Michael Schwalbe, Ellen Dubin, Lisa Holloway Attaway, Andy Barnett, Todd Habercorn, Joe Zija, Jared Martzell, Tammy Ryan, Leila Burzens, Andrea Gibson, Jean Francois Donaldson. The game was created by Per Anders Ustblad, Linus Nordgren, Aslan Tursic, Henrik Engstrom, Marcus Landen, Jenny Brusk, Carl Fogel, Joel Sandberg, Emil Bergfist, Timmy Meadham, Ulf Wilhelmsson, Michael Schwalbe, Adrian Kuzminski, and others. Welcome to Frequency Missing. This game is played in landscape mode with the home button to the right. Main menu, 